Hey everybody, what's going on? Brendan Miller here, back with another video. And in this video, I want to talk about a lure that I have had some history with. So as a kid growing up, I used to hear of this revolutionary lure called the Banjo Minnow. The Banjo Minnow. Now the Banjo Minnow is most famous for being one of those as seen on TV fishing lures that were promoted very, very heavily during the 80s and the 90s. The only fishing lure that looks exactly like a real minnow. These companies use really cheesy infomercials to kind of stir up hype around this particular lure. The Banjo Minnow was no exception. It is unlike any of a fishing lure in existence today. Back in the earlier days of my channel, I actually did a review of the Banjo Minnow, and I think I said something like this. Will I be using the Banjo Minnow for future fishing trips? My answer is probably not. So yeah, the Banjo Minnow was an effective lure, but it was nowhere near what it was hyped up to be. I thought it was pretty mid at best. And honestly, since that review, I have not thought much about the Banjo Minnow at all, until I got an ad online for, you guessed it, the Banjo Minnow. It was back from the dead, resurrected, rebranded with a new look. So I thought it'd be a fun video to take a look at this lure again and see if the new and improved version of it is any good. Let's get into it. The first thing that caught my attention when looking at the new packaging of the Banjo Minnow is that it says right here, the world's only genetic response fishing lure in bold letters right on the front. Genetic response fishing lure, what does that even mean? And this is what's kind of frustrating about this kind of marketing is because it sounds really scientific, but it's also kind of vague at the same time. I mean, there are plenty of lures that trigger reaction bites from fish, and that in and of itself is a genetic response to a fishing lure or even to prey a lot of times. So to claim that this lure is the world's only genetic response fishing lure, I think is a bit of a bold claim, but marketing aside, what does this bait actually look like? Well, here is the Banjo Minnow on a close-up shot. As you can see, when compared to the old version, this newer version definitely looks a lot better in my opinion. It's got a traditional minnow shape to it, and the thing that I do like about it is it's actually quite thin, like a real minnow. This moss green with the silver belly is definitely my favorite. I really like this color, actually, for the lakes and rivers that I fish. I think this will be a solid choice. Now, let's talk about the actual plastic of the lure. As I remember from the old banjo minnows, they seem like they were a little bit stiff, and they actually had these little grooves cut into the side of the bait that would allow the bait to swim a little more freely. These don't have those grooves at all, and I have to say, the plastic does feel pretty decent. This is about what I'd expect from your average soft plastic fishing lure. And I have to say, in the hand, the bait is somewhat limber. It's got a flopping action to it, so that'll definitely help increase the action once we put this bait in the water. And with that in mind, I headed out to one of the creeks I like to fish to see if the new banjo minnow can catch fish. That bait literally hit the water. First fish on the banjo minnow, nice little smallmouth right there. I have to say, that was pretty fun. This bait literally just hit the water and this nice little guy absolutely whaled it. Beautiful fish, sweet. All right, a couple initial first impressions from fishing with the banjo minnow for a couple hours. The first thing I noticed about this bait is that it is actually very light. I'm throwing this particular bait right here, which is one of the largest sizes, on eight pound test braid on a spinning rod and I'm having to snap my rod pretty hard in order to get some decent casting distance with this bait. Again, it's not weighted at all. It's very, very lightweight, and so I'm having a little bit of trouble getting the distance that I need. That does come with a benefit. Because this bait is so light, when it actually hits the water, it barely makes any splash or any sound. And right now the creek I'm fishing gets a ton of pressure. The water's crystal clear. So having a bait that lands very delicately on the surface of the water has actually gotten me a couple of bites and caught me a fish. But again, that's one of the things I'm gonna have to work around is the light weight of the bait. Again, there is some downsides to it, but there is also a positive side, like I said, with this bait being so light, it is rather stealthy. So hopefully, that'll help us catch a couple more fish. All right, this stupid fish kept hitting my bait like three or four times. Turns out, turns out rock bass like the banjo minnow too. Look at this little guy. Munched the bait head first. It's the only reason why I hooked him too. Got a fish on. Got him. All right, guys, beautiful largemouth bass 
on the banjo minnow, pegged him right in the roof of the mouth, perfect cast. Honestly, the biggest bass I've gotten out of this creek, I think. That's a nice little fish right there. Absolutely whaled that thing. So as you guys saw, I was able to catch a total of three fish from that creek. Now, the one thing I want to mention about the creek that I was fishing is that it gets pressured quite a bit. A lot of people fish it, and the water is very clear, and from what I've seen, most of the fish in there are skittish and wary. So I definitely have to give props to this bait for catching those three fish out of a highly pressured environment. I'm sure a lot of people by now are saying, yeah, yeah, Brendan, you can catch fish with this lure, but how does it look under the water? What is the action actually like? Well, let's take a look at the action. So here we have the bait under the water, and I wanna talk about what I like about this bait's action and what I do not like about this bait's action. I think it has a good action in the water. Is it the most mind-blowing action I've ever seen? No, but I definitely think it is solid, especially when it's rigged through the nose like so. One of the things I'm not a huge fan of with this bait is the fact that sometimes it tends to flip over upside down when you're popping it through the water. Now, like I mentioned, this bait does not have any kind of belly weight system in it, no weight at all, so the bait kind of flops around, and sometimes I found the action of this bait to just be a little bit weird, like it would be working fine one minute, and then I'd pop it, and then it would start flopping around upside down, and it didn't look realistic at all. But with that critique aside, I would say the action of this bait, again, is good, and it does catch fish, so thumbs up for that. Now, another nitpick that I have about the banjo minnow is the fact that the smaller sized banjo minnows are a little bit stiffer and they're not quite as big, and hence they have a worse action in the water than the bigger sizes. I found that the largest size banjo minnow actually had the best action, and that bait is even a little more dense, which makes it a little easier to throw. Now, one of the things that I wanted to try when making this video was put the banjo minnow up against some other soft plastics that are somewhat similar, namely the Zoom Fluke. The Zoom Fluke has been a staple in a lot of bass anglers tackle boxes for many years. You can do a lot with it. You can put it on a jig head, you can fish it weightless, or you can even rig it through the nose and fish it just like the banjo minnow. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tie on a banjo minnow here, rig it through the nose, we're gonna fish it in the water, see what the action looks like, and then we're actually gonna compare it to a Zoom Fluke rigged the exact same way. And we're gonna see if the banjo minnow has some secret sauce and some unique action, and can it stand out when compared to the Zoom Fluke. Honestly, I have to say, there's not a whole lot of difference between these two. If anything, I prefer the fluke, just because I don't have to pop my rod as hard to get a beautiful quivering action out of the bait. Now, one thing that I will say about the banjo minnow is the action definitely seems to be a little bit more erratic uh, and random, which is one of the things that they claim helps it catch more fish. I also want to talk about the price of the banjo minnow because I do feel it is somewhat important. So for five banjo minnows plus hooks and other rigging accessories, you're going to pay $19.99 for the five minnows, like I said, and for the hooks and the rubber bands and the little eyes that mount into the bait. For comparison, you can go to Walmart and buy a pack of Zoom Super Flukes for five bucks and some change. You could also throw in a pack of hooks for another two or three bucks. So what are my final thoughts on the banjo minnow? Well, first and foremost, this bait does catch fish. The action of this bait is decent and it does mimic a distressed or panicked bait fish. Now, is the action of this bait mind-blowing, cutting edge, and will make fish literally jump into the boat? No. Like I said, the action of this bait, if you know how to work it correctly, is decent at Best. If I was going to sum up the banjo minnow in two words, I would say overhyped and overpriced. And for those reasons, this bait is not going to be a permanent staple in my tackle box. Again, like I said, I would much rather use Zoom Super Flukes. They're easier to rig in my opinion, they're cheaper, and I personally think the colors are a lot better. Have you guys tried the banjo minnow? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video, and as always, this is Brendan Miller. Stay hooked. I'll see you later.